Hello. So now we are going to continue working on our Super Rails application where users are able to subscribe to see premium content and see free content, uh, well, for free without being subscribed. And uh, yeah, it's something like a blog uh, behind a paywall. So previously we've created the Stripe subscriptions, we've created posts and we've added votes, we've added some styling for them and now we are going to continue working on our posts. Now, here is a post uh, where I've actually added some markdown and this is a real post that I have on my uh, old blog. So what I've done, here's this uh, post with the markdown, I just went to my blog and copied the markdown and this is what it looks like uh, at the moment. And well, I don't like the way it looks. So uh, the code blocks are not really well visible. And we would like to style uh, our markdown a bit more. And to, to do this, we are actually going to use a gem named uh, Rouge. So uh, this gem lets you basically style uh, code blocks, uh, like highlight code blocks uh, really beautifully. And uh, now we're going to install this gem and uh, add it into our application so that our posts uh, look uh, more professional, more beautiful. So we are going to add this gem to our gem file. Here we have gem root carpet and we'll also have this gem rouge and run bundle. Okay, and when I actually went to the readme of the gem, I was a bit confused. Okay, he has uh, the readme how to use the gem rouge, but how should I use it with the uh, markdown and how should I use it with markdown correctly? And I went through a lot of uh, uh, guides and blog posts and basically devised, uh, so came up with my own best approach how to do it. And I've also documented it on my blog, so I won't have to uh, learn how to do it right away. I'll just uh, copy my approach. So we've installed the gem root carpet for markdown and rouge for uh, styling. And now inside our application helper, we are going to add this uh, helper. So at the moment, if we go to app, helpers, application helper, we have this uh, markdown. And here we just say which options we want to use for the markdown. And we say markdown new. We use uh, the text that we pass in from our post dot, uh, body, And uh, we pass in these options. And we say that uh, it is to HTML and HTML safe. And now we're going to kind of extend this uh, method with using the gem rouge. So we're going to require red carpet, rouge, rouge plugins, red carpet. And we're going to add this method from uh, red carpet, no, from rouge. Yeah. And uh, you see one more beautiful thing I'm adding here is we're going to make all links have a target blank. What does it do? So at the moment, if we have a link, it gets opened in the same page. And if we add target blank, then all links will be opened in a new page. And I think it's really a, a nice thing to do inside the post. You don't want to distract a person from reading your post. You don't want to redirect a person to another page from your page. You want to let the person open it uh, in a new tab. So we're going to add these options and we're going to use uh, Red copy together with rouge. Let's just add all this. In this episode, uh, I'm not focusing solely on the markdown and red carpet, so I'm not going to explain how this all works and how, how I came up with it. So just, I'm adding these uh, uh, extensions and uh, you see we are kind of extending this markdown to text. Okay, so uh, let's save it. And next, we will need to add a style. So if we go to this gem rouge, we can uh, go to search. And uh, there are a few different themes. So we have uh, lib rouge themes, and there are a lot of different themes that we can use. And we're going to use one of these themes, and we can actually customize it. So how are we going to add a theme? Well, we're going to create a file in our app asset style sheets, rouge scss.erb. Now notice it's really interesting. We are creating scss.erb. Okay, so we're going to assets, style sheets, and here we will create a file named rouge scss.erb. Okay, and we can actually rename application CSS to scss 
and we will require so we will import rouge well yeah i think we can either import rouge with scss or require it with uh, css okay and in this file we will uh, import one of these themes so let's try we will import to uh, the theme uh, base 16 with a mode doc okay i will import this theme and i will start the server okay now i'm refreshing and i will go to cancel no edit in the post and you see like magic we have our uh, markdown our code blocks uh, styled in a better way and they are much more distinctly visible now what did i do i just added the gem root carpet then i overrode this whole helper so we've added this uh, rouge plugin we've uh, required rouge inside our markdown helper and we have uh, imported rouge so we have imported this rouge theme base 16. now we can also try to experiment with a few other themes themes let's try thankful eyes instead so i'm adding this and refreshing the page and you see it already looks different now actually you see uh, here we have some ruby code highlighting Why is ruby code highlighting because we said ruby at the end of this uh, code block so it's kind of a rouge uh, markdown theme if i remove this ruby it will be just highlighted as code not for a specific language you see now it doesn't have this ruby highlighting so actually i've tried uh, all these uh, themes and the ones i liked best were thankful eyes and base 16 mode dog okay so i will add base 16 mo mode dog and refresh once again and for now we are done with uh, adding uh, the gem rouge so this is basically it basically everything we wanted to add now and also if i press link you see it gets opened in a new tab and this is really neat in my opinion so uh, here in application html here we have these link attributes no follow and we have uh, merged link attributes target blank okay so looks looks good let's actually save our changes get status get add all get commit main jam rouge okay looks nice so uh, let's go back to our application and let's uh, improve it a bit more so i will uh, close a few tabs and yes actually what do we want to embed a video inside our markdown well at the moment i think we have it uh, white listed here so uh, let's try just embedding a youtube video so i will uh, say share i will press embed copy the embed code and you see inside markdown we can uh, also uh, basically do some kind of html manipulations so i will add these html lines and update the post and will it work or not let's see i will refresh now didn't it work hmm, strange let's see once again i will copy it i will uh, paste it here and update post and looks like it didn't work okay i think it didn't work because we've changed our settings so before it was whitelisted and now we have not whitelisted it let's see i will uh, try to do it with the old markdown that i had previously so refreshing yeah so in the previous markdown i had it white listed and not in the new one okay so uh, let's see what options or extensions am i missing to be able to embed videos uh, to embed html uh, and it's actually a good question do we want it available or no it's okay we've got hard drop yes uh, let's see which one can it be it might be fenced no it might be filter html that we don't want to have let's just try without it 
let's just see if it does the change. So now I remove filter HTML and and it should work. Let's just see. Yeah, yeah. So I added the extension filter HTML and that's why it didn't let us embed a video. Well, it is a question for you to decide in your application. Do you want people to be able to embed the HTML inside your markdown or no? Anyway, for now we will go without it and later on we can enable embedding HTML because kind of think about it, a person can embed any kind of HTML. He can embed the whole page. Uh, yeah, that can lead to some unwanted uh, results. So we can also decide on what kind of HTML we want to allow and which HTML not to allow. Well, this can be a question for later. Anyway, going back, we didn't do any changes now. Or did we? Okay, it doesn't matter. I will uh, go back to the application and see what we want to do uh, next. So let's have a look. Uh, I'm going to our posts page and let's try to search for a post. I will type install or some kind of words, some kind of letters and you see, yeah, I have the search working. But what if we want to actually highlight the search results, the keywords that we are searching for, something like this. So it would, the search results, the parts of the phrases of the words would be highlighted like this. We can actually do it in a really, really easy way. We would possibly go to our views, uh, posts, uh, post partial, and... Uh, I think in the post title, for example, so we're searching for the post title, we would add a highlight for params Q title contains. So Ruby has actually a method named highlight. So it would be equals uh, highlight. And what do we want to highlight? We want to highlight the uh, post dot title okay and we would uh, highlight it based on the params on these params so we would say params dot dig and it would be q and the title contains so we have params q and params title contains we can actually check it first of all let's just try to find these params I will go to our post view and uh, yeah, I'll go to post index. And here I will just try to display these uh, params. So I would say equals uh, params dot dig and let's say just Q. So I will refresh and you see we have this params Q and we want not everything, we want the title. So Q and title contains. Okay, so the title is Insta, the one that we're searching for. And uh, based on this, we will do our highlight. So here we have highlight, post title, params dig, Q title contains. Okay, let's see if it works. I'm just refreshing the page and I might have a duplicate title. Let's just see. Okay, I made some kind of uh, mistake. Yes, I didn't close the braces. Let's see. Yeah, so here you see I have uh, a title once again and yeah, it's breaking the world. So let's say insta, you see it add some kind of additional spacing. Well, we don't want to have this spacing, but anyway, it highlights uh, this uh, part of text. So let's try something else. Uh, let's uh, try to search for something else. And you see we have uh, this other word. Or let's search, let's say for the letter A, and we will get a few posts and we'll have the letter A highlighted all around them, you see? It is highlighted so uh, this way it would be easier for us to navigate our search results 
But again, we want to have it inside the link, not separately. So we would have uh, a highlight and we would have this uh, uh, link to. Yeah, so we would just move all this highlight into the post title. Something like this. And let's refresh. Okay, so it looks a bit better. Now, of course, we will definitely want to override our uh, CSS for the highlight. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at how the highlight element looks in the HTML. So it is mock. Okay. And we would want to possibly remove some kind of padding. Yeah, so inside our so inside our CSS file we would possibly remove this padding. Yeah, okay. Well, we can do it a bit uh, later. Let's add the some more functionality. So now we have this search by title. And let's search not only by title in the same field, but by the title or description. And uh, if we go to the Rancic documentation, let's go to GitHub slash Rancic. I think it is GitHub slash active record hackery slash Rancic. And we can search the same field by a few database, database columns. So it would be something like or. So name or description or email contains. And we can just go to our post index and search not by title, but title or description. So title or description contains, and here we would say title or description. Let's see. Okay. And let's try to search by a description. So something like TOC. I search for TOC and I should find, yeah, the only post that has TOC, but it has TOC in the title also. So it is not a good uh, result. Let's search for this, the word SAPE. And we'll get posts that have the SAP in the title or description. So you see it has type the, the description with SAP, SAP, and that's why we got it. And let's also highlight the results from the description the same way we do it in the post uh, title. So here we have this title contains, and yeah, I think it doesn't work anymore because we search by title or description. You see it doesn't work anymore. So it is title... Uh, or description contains like this. I will refresh once again, and now it works. And uh, we will highlight the description in the same way. So here we have post description, and instead we will have the highlight post dot description. Okay, let's see. I will refresh. And uh, let's search once again. And here you see we have the highlights from whatever the title or the description. So works well and looks good. And this way it is much uh, better to see the actual results of your search. I like it. And uh, yeah, let's save our changes. So uh, I will say get status. Get Oh yeah, I will actually remove this... Uh, params from here, we don't need it. Yes, git add all, git commit main, highlight, uh, search results. Okay, looks good. And let's now go back to our application. So uh, let's have a look at uh, our search by authors. Let's actually create a new account. So I will log in, or actually sign up. Okay, some password, sign up. Now I will need to confirm my account. So I'm going to my email. 
and uh, go into this link. So I have logged in and let me create a new post. Let it be the title, description, whatever. And let's go to our posts and try to find this post by the author. And you see we have a blank author. I will try to search by this blank author. And yeah, we get this post and we get something else. Well, it is uh, really not cool. We don't actually get this post, we get all the posts. So why is it so? Because this author doesn't have a name. And in our search, I guess we search by the a name of the user, so use name contains. So a user actually has to have a name inside our application to be able to search by this uh, user. And now the user doesn't have a name, so we see that there is a blank, uh, a blank option where there should be the name of the user, but we don't uh, have the opportunity to search it. I will try another user, for example, and now it works. So what shall we do with this blank uh, option? We should make it so that there is no availability for a user's name to be blank. How are we going to do it? Well, I think I will add an after action uh, after creating a user account. So if the user doesn't have uh, a name, the name will, will be assigned from their uh, username. So how will we make it? Here we already have this after create for sending, sending an API call to Stripe and we will create another after create where we will uh, uh, update their name. Update name uh, with username. And yeah, so here we have this username Let's just think and see if it works. So update name would be the username. Uh, if uh, the name is, uh, this should happen if uh, the name wasn't assigned by OmniAuth. So I think uh, this happens, let's see. Here we create and then we update. Okay. Anyway, I think uh, it should be fine for now. So after creating, we update the name with the username. And here we have the username. If uh, the name is present, we get name. Yeah, it's fine. And uh, yeah, we'll actually not need this username. We will not need this uh, username because we will always have a name. Anyway, let's try this way now. So I will uh, create a new account and let's see if it works. So uh, I'm going to sign up. Okay, password, password information, sign up. Okay going back and confirming my account. Okay, account confirmed. And yes, you see a name was assigned. Now, if you go to the user page of the other one, of this one, you see a name was not assigned. So yeah, we've got a name assigned. Of course, this method can be refactored and uh, made better, but that's fine. Anyway, now let's try to create an account from uh, OmniAuth and see how it works. Uh, I will go back and say Rails DB reset. So we will delete all the data and create a new account from social uh, login. So Rails server. And uh, let's see, I will sign in with GitHub. Okay. And yes, the name was saved. And now I will uh, sign out. Yeah, anyway, I didn't have to sign out, so it works. If uh, I log in with the social account, in the end, I get the name from the social account, but not uh, the first part of the email. So it works well. And if uh, I sign up not through a social account, my name is the first part of the email. 
so looks uh, fine. Okay, let's uh, maybe save our changes. So git status, git add all, git commit main, assign a name if uh, not provided by social login. Okay, looks uh, fine. And now let's go back to our application and see uh, what other minor improvements we can do. Anyway, that a couple of really big features that I still want to add to make it work is uh, embedding uh, videos. So that would, each post would have a separate field for a YouTube or Vimeo video. Then each post would have tags and comments and the comments would have nested comments. So this is the global plan of uh, what the application MVP needs. And uh, basically that's it. But first we'll just make some more tiny improvements. So going to our posts, here we have this uh, uh, like or dislike buttons. And you see we have this progress bar that uh, changes only when we refresh our page. So we can actually make it change when we like or dislike a post. How shall we do it? Let's go, uh, let's go to our uh, post partial. Here we have our post partial. And here you see we have these links to uh, upvote, link, uh, like and uh, downvote. And we will also move the progress uh, into a partial. So uh, we will do it something, somehow like this. Uh, render posts uh, progress. And we would create this partial. So go into our posts, new file, progress.html.erb. And we would uh, put, we would move this uh, progress bar into this partial. Okay, let's see how it would look. So it is the first step, and the second step would be to edit the Vue.js ERB to also update the uh, partial for the progress whenever something changes. So we would say get element by ID uh, progress for the post ID, render posts progress. And here we would also wrap this all into an uh, ID. So the same way we do it here, here we have this content tag div, and uh, this will also be in this content tag and it will have an end tag and it would be progress. Okay, let's see, I will refresh. Yeah, the style has changed. I removed the break, not much has changed. So I will try to downvote and you see it works. I will try to upvote and it, uh, so the whole progress bar changes uh, dynamically. Let me try to do the same from another account so log in, I will do it with, yeah, just another account. Okay, now I'm going to the posts and let's say I will upvote it downvote it and you see now it is zero so looks uh, much more dynamic and much more beautiful of course so just to make it a bit more consistent with the previous style i will add a break right here so that there is yeah just some keeping the distance okay looks fine so yeah this is the way our posts look uh, now of course it can be always improved and thinking of improvements yeah one more thing I usually add to applications is uh, recapture. So um, often there is the problem that uh, bot accounts sign up uh, into your application, uh, just like random accounts uh, are created, not by humans, by uh, robots. And uh, there is this gem invisible recapture that helps uh, from this. So let's say uh, we have this gem invisible capture. 
and we will install this gem and uh, we do not need Google or Captcha and we don't want to be dependent on Google where we can be independent from it. So uh, it is kind of uh, an invisible recapture that is built in the basically pure Ruby that we are going to add to our application. And if you read the, the readme, you can see that uh, it, uh, it basically creates uh, an invisible field that a bot would usually fill in, but uh, a user wouldn't, and it has some more additional checks. So uh, I will take this gem invisible capture and add it to our application. So uh, I'm going to our gem file. Yeah, the main goal for fewer uh, accounts to be created that are not created by real people. I run bundle. And uh, yeah, we can include this invisible capture in, uh, in any fee form, for example but we're going to do it inside our device uh, registrations. Now, how are we going to do it inside our device uh, registrations? I'm going to, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I've already done it before. I'll just copy it. <laughs> so uh, again, in the block, I've got this invisible capture. And how do we install it? Yeah, yeah, actually I have an example of how it works. So it would uh, give a result like, sorry that this was too quick or something like that. And in the logs, you would get something like potential spam detected. Okay, so they added this gem invisible capture and we would need another device controller inside our application that we are going to override that would be registrations. Now we've already got confirmations on the auth callbacks and we would also add the uh, registrations. So we'll run rail generate device controllers, users, registrations. And you see it was automatically set, put into the users folder inside our controllers because we set, set users here. Okay, let's have a look at our registrations controller, but also it gives us a good prompt that we need to add this inside our rules to override the default device behavior of getting it from the gem itself. So we will go to config, um, roots, and we've got OmniAuth callbacks, confirmations, and we would also have, uh, where is it? We would also have registrations. So registrations would lead to users slash registrations. Okay, and go into this registrations controller. So there is all this default behavior that we are not going to override, but we are just going to add another before action. We're going to add this before action in the visible capture only on uh, create. Like this. And uh, yeah, we've already added reg registrations. And inside our views for device registrations new, we need to add this invisible capture. Now, it looks like we did not add our device views uh, to our application yet. So here we have only posts, static public pages and users. So we would need to add the device views. Now, usually I don't like adding all the device views. I like adding only the views that uh, we are actually overriding. So uh, actually we can just generate device views. Let's say Rails generate device views and it would generate all the device views. There are a lot of them, but we are not overriding the styling of all of them yet. We're just going to add this one uh, line to device registrations new. So we would uh, remove all the views that we are not overriding. We're just getting them from device that is installed in our applications, application, and we have this device registrations new, the only file that we are leaving. And here we would add this uh, additional field. So invisible capture. Yeah, something like this. And uh, let's uh, see if it works. So I'll type get status. Yeah, not so many changes, you see. Oh, actually I should have changed, saved my changes from this 
uh, from adding the progress bar. So let me do this. So uh, here they are, get status, get commit main, uh, progress updates, uh, progress bar updates after vote. Okay, and uh, yes. So now we're going to uh, see if this works. I'm going to start the server and go to the login page. Yeah, and uh, actually, and way you can check it uh, as a human, you would go to sign up and try to do it really fast and see if it works. So you see, you get the sorrow, this was too quick, please resubmit. And this is actually something that uh, is provided by this uh, gem invisible uh, capture. And here you can see something like potential spam detected from this IP invisible capture time step threshold not reached. So you see it took uh, just two seconds for me to submit the whole form. And uh, well, usually a human doesn't uh, submit a, a sign up form in uh, two seconds. It usually takes longer. So uh, that's why it was caught by this invisible uh, capture potential spam detected uh, check. So we can say that invisible capture works and uh, that we already have some basic layer of defense from uh, uh, bot accounts. Okay, so I think this is uh, it for right now. Let's just have a look at the readme. Maybe there is something else uh, worth adding right away. Yeah, so here we have these uh, options. Yeah, doesn't matter much for now. So uh, here are the customizations for so settings for humans. Yeah, looks fine. We don't need to override it that much right away, but we can do it later on. So I'll say git add all, git commit main. And what have we done? We have added the jam invisible capture. Okay, now let's push our changes and uh, yeah, let's uh, say git push and let's also push to Heroku and see if our changes work. So uh, what I'm a bit concerned with, will uh, our changes in application SSS and root SSS ERB be caught by our application in uh, production on Heroku? In the meantime, I will just close the tabs that I'm not using. Okay. And you see, it was quite easy to add the rouge when we already had some work done previously on it. Oh. Okay, so let's open our application in production and see if it worked. So I will log in and uh, yeah, I'll select GitHub and actually create some kind of post with uh, some nice markdown and see if it works. So I'm going to create a new post. Now it says something went wrong, so we'll address this later. And let me actually just create a post I will take one of my posts on my current uh, blog that is on Jekyll. That will be in the future moved from this Jekyll blog .com, to the Super Rails application. So I will go to my posts and here all the posts are written in Markdown. So, so let me take this post for example and I will open it as raw. So it is in Markdown, I will copy it into my production application. And I will just, uh, yeah, add a title. And for now I will add the tags as the description. And create the post and let's have a look at it. So uh, yeah, it works, everything works well. 
Now uh, I was thinking of a more interesting thing. So uh, let's assume we have uh, a lot of posts. Let's assume we have uh, hundreds of posts and uh, a user will want to get the post that he liked or the post that he disliked or the post that he uh, uh, either voted on or didn't vote on. So uh, we would let a user to select all the posts that he liked or disliked or all the posts that he shared his opinion about or the posts that he did not share his opinion about. So uh, how would we do it? Well, actually, we would need to go to the documentation of acts as votable. And here we have these methods, user get voted, get upvoted, and get downvoted. So how would it work? Well, let's say Rails console, and we'll take the user.last. What user is it? Okay, this one, and let's say user.last and get voted comment or actually post get voted post and here we get these posts and let's say get uh, upvoted there are none and let's say get downvoted okay and actually this uh, three methods i'm missing a fourth method in my opinion so get the comments or posts that the user did not vote on. And this is something we would have to uh, decide on how to do on our own, as I understand. So anyway, let's uh, try adding these three filters. Now, how can we do it? Well, we can create uh, scopes inside our model, inside our post model. We can uh, create separate views for them. And we can add them to Ransack. We can add the scopes to Ransack. Well, for the beginning, we can try creating separate views just as uh, an example. And then later on, we will improve. So I will start the Rails server. And here we have our post controller. And here we would have uh, three more separate views that would all render the index. Uh, no, I don't think it is a good approach anyway but let's say uh at how, how do we check it we would say uh user so posts equals user get upvoted posts something like this let's say at posts equals current user dot get uh, upvoted uh post And then we'd have the method to get the, uh, now not get upvoted. It has different syntax. So get upvoted, get voted, and get downvoted. So this will be the three different options. But uh, I think it's not really cool to create a separate view for them. We would uh, possibly want to create three separate buttons and uh, just open the scope inside our posts view. Yeah, anyway, we will do it, but we will do it in uh, the next episode because now I really need to get uh, a drink and have a rest. So, well, anyway, we did some real nice stuff. We've added invisible recapture, we've added the uh, highlighting for our search results we've added the progress bar and we've added the yeah red carpet invisible recapture yeah so looks fine now i'm just for the last time checking if our search works and does it work do we have any posts what's wrong yeah i should have not saved these three So refreshing once again. Yeah. So everything works. I just shouldn't have saved these uh, uh, ideas in our posts index. So I guess that's it for now. And thanks for being with me and uh, looking forward. And I'm really eager to uh, the next videos where we are going to finally actually finish this application and ship it and share lots and lots of great Ruby and Rails content on the Super Rails website. So. Have fun coding. <laughs>